When it comes to Godzilla monsters, there are few as underrated as Kamakuras, the praying mantis kaiju. Despite these insect monsters appearing in a whopping six Godzilla movies, plus numerous other works, the bugs are often overlooked. Probably because, let's be real, they look like... bugs. In a series with bird-like buzzsaw dinosaurs from outer space and three-headed lightning bolt firing dragons, it makes sense that the majority of people would find a big mantis to be a bit of an uninspired concept. But with Kamakuras, you really can't judge the book by its cover, because at least in my opinion, there is more to these savage little creatures than meets the eye. Today we're going to be looking at the entire history of Kamakuras, both behind the scenes and in universe, even looking at Kamakuras toys near the end, and by the time we're done, your opinions on these kaiju may be somewhat changed. That's all next on today's episode of The Toku Professor. <laughs> Welcome students, glad to see you still wanted to pop in for class despite summer break being in full swing. I know my other students, Kishimu-kun and Pencil Leopard wanted to be here, but their folks had already arranged a vacation to a tropical island for this week. So I doubt we'll be seeing them today, unless the camera somehow cuts away from me for some reason I guess. But anyway, let's not waste any more time and begin this history of Kamakuras, beginning with the Bugs debut film, Toho's Son of Godzilla. Man, this is going to be fun! <laughs> Get it? Mantis? Okay. Let's just jump in. Kamakuras was not present in the first draft for what would become Son of Godzilla, and seems to have been dreamed up along with the spider monster Kumonga by screenwriter Shinichi Sekizawa, since new villainous monsters were needed. I discussed the rewriting of the script in my History of Kumonga video from last year, so in order to avoid retreading too much ground, I'm going to recommend you check that video out to learn more. Anyway, to create Kamakuras, someone drew this concept sketch, and a prototype was created by the special effects art director Yasuyuki Inoue. I'm assuming that this concept maquette is the one. Then, sculptor-slash-modeler Nobuyuki Yasumaru, with help from Jiro Shirasaki, got to work sculpting the actual props. Three Kamakuras total appear in the finished movie, but nine total models were apparently made, three small, three medium, and three large, for various types of shots. One source states that the props were primarily made of wood, but another seems to indicate that a type of sponge like that used to make bath mats was prominently used. Maybe both are true. Considering the sheer amount of models that were made, that's quite possible. The front claws had a metal plate inside to keep them rigid, ball bearings were used for the neck joints, and the eyes were made of resin, with electric lights hooked up inside them so they could glow. Out of the nine props created, four were actually purposefully burned during filming, namely two each of the medium and small Kamakuras, leaving just one complete set. The props were controlled via piano wire puppetry, just like Kumonga, and as was also the case with the spider kaiju, manipulating these guys couldn't have been much fun at all, since you had to position yourself next to the very hot studio lights to operate them. However, when researching for this video, I got the impression that the crew encountered more problems when dealing with Kumonga, because his eight legs were more complex. The puppetry for both Kamakuras and Kumonga were well received when Son of Godzilla released, though it is possible to see the piano wires attached to them in some scenes. A life-size prop of one of the Kamakuras' legs was also used for the scene where one of the mantises attacks the human camp, just like how they made a Kumonga leg. There really are a lot of similarities between these two K-bug kaiju, aren't there? And yes, I know that spiders aren't bugs, but in my book they're close enough. We'll be seeing a lot of overlap in their histories today, but a good chunk of totally new stuff as well. Now it's time to discuss Kamakuras' name, which by just looking at it looks like it could be pronounced a kajillion ways. I have a tendency to refer to it as Kamakuras. However, the version I've been using in this video is the most similar to the Japanese pronunciation, so it's probably the most correct version. Or, if you just find it too hard to say, you could always call the monster by its older name from an English dub, Gymantis or Gymantis, which is admittedly pretty cool sounding, though if you do, just be aware that this isn't the English name that Toho ended up trademarking for it. Its real name comes from the Japanese word kamakiri, meaning mantis. The kamakuras have several screeches they make, which for the most part seem to be higher pitch Ebera cries, but the question is, did Toho modify the cries to be higher pitch themselves, or take the sounds from the Ultra 7 monster Ella King, who made his debut two months before Son of Godzilla, and who also had high pitch Ebera roars? It's a mystery. Kamakuras doesn't just have a roar though, it also has its own theme that played in the movie when it showed up, which is incredibly underrated. It's actually one of my favorite songs in the whole Godzilla series, simple though it may be, and it really gives off giant creepy bug vibes. Lacking music knowledge, I can't really describe it, so as long as YouTube agrees with me that this is fair use, here's a brief snippet of the track. Pretty foreboding and exciting, huh? On that note, or 
multiple notes, I think it's time to take a look at the role of Kamakuris in Son of Godzilla from an in-universe perspective. The Solgal Island native Kamakuris didn't actually start out as massive bugs, instead they... Oh, wait, now that I think about it, adult size is incredibly massive for a bug. But it's not kaiju size. At this height, they are just referred to as giant praying mantises, and were already a huge annoyance to the group of scientists who came to the island to run an experiment and see if they could freeze the island over. Thankfully, though, loud gunshots could be fired to chase the insects back into the jungle. But then, when the group botched their first attempt at a tropical freeze, big Nintendo fan here if you couldn't already tell, due to interference, Solgal Island was hit by a massive radioactive deluge and heat wave, which caused the giant praying mantises to transform into 50 meter monsters that were of course far more worrisome to humans. If you're a carnivorous bug of that size, you need something really large to satisfy your appetite, and thanks to their mantisy senses, a group of three of these mutated insects were able to locate a giant mound of rocks with a secret prize inside, which they proceeded to unearth with their scythe-like arms. It was a giant glowing egg. The bugs either didn't want to or weren't able to break the egg open that day, but the next day, all three of them were seen banging on the eggshell with their arms, trying to get at whatever it was that was inside. And that thing was a baby Godzilla, namely Manila. Manila is a somewhat widely disliked kaiju, so I'm sure there's a few of you out there who would have preferred it if the Kamakuris had just had him for their lunch. Perish the thought! Leave him alone! What? Who? What is it, Kashima-kun? Oh, nothing. Just felt like saying something dramatic. Ugh, don't scare me like that. Come on, let's explore this island. Okay. But a mantis meal isn't what happened. Oh, the Kamakuris were getting ready to by poking and prodding the baby monster with their arms as they stared at him hungrily, but a rather goofy-looking Godzilla would be having none of it. He'd been on his way to Solgal Island for some time, and though he'd missed the moment his son was born, he arrived in time to attempt to save him from the clutches of the three Kamakuris. One of the three, we'll call him Kevin just for fun, placed one of his little legs on Manila to pin him down as another, who we'll call Kyle, lunged at Godzilla, and was immediately thrown down and left stunned. Kevin attempted to take matters into his own hands, but Godzilla sidestepped and ended up finishing the frail monster off with a blast of atomic breath. Yeah, what's that? Didn't read about that in the travel guide. That just left Kyle and the rather quiet Kent Kamakuris. Godzilla kicked a stone in their direction, which Kyle was able to intercept. He and Kent passed the rock back and forth between each other, and then tossed it back at Godzilla and his son, the latter of whom took a blow to the head. This distracted the King of the Monsters long enough for Kyle to attempt another leap attack, which missed. Kent finally decided it was his time to strike, and was able to knock Godzilla over. This encouraged Kyle, who figured he'd try to land a lunge one more time. But again, Godzilla took hold of him and beat him to smithereens before finishing him off with yet another blast of atomic breath. Kent didn't like how things were going at all, and decided it was time to flee from this atomic menace. So he took off, and Godzilla roared angrily as the last Kamakuris got away. Eek, it's huge! Where'd we leave the bug spray? Deprived of his meal, Kent decided to attack the scientist's camp, and this time no amount of rifle shots could scare the insect off. But the kaiju quickly lost interest and left, to the relief of the humans. Later, this Kamakuris chased Psycho as she was collecting herbs for some of the men who were sick, but just before she was knocked out, she managed to call for help from Manila thanks to a special monster call she'd somehow perfected. Manila had had some time to grow and learn some things from Godzilla, and he seemed confident he could take Kamakuris on, but he'd unfortunately forgotten how to use his atomic breath and was only able to fire Cheerio-shaped smoke, and Kent began toying with the poor kaiju and clapping with delight. But the insect monster's fun quickly came to an end when Godzilla arrived and blasted him in the face with atomic breath. Somehow he didn't catch fire and was able to escape from the King of the Monsters yet again. But Kent's lucky streak would soon come to an end when a little later he got a bit too curious about what Kumonga the spider kaiju was up to. He tried to fly his way out of trouble again but was caught in Kumonga's webs and though he tried he couldn't escape. Kumonga was effortlessly able to jab the last Kamakuris with his poisonous needle and that was the end of all the mantis kaiju. Maybe anyway. It doesn't seem right that only three giant praying mantises could have been dwelling on Solgal Island unless their species was about to go extinct, but maybe only three were exposed to enough radiation to become Kamakuruses. Even if there were more though, I doubt they could have handled the artificial blizzard that covered the island shortly afterward with nowhere to hide their large bodies for warmth. So I think it's safe to say that all the Solgal Island Kamakuris were eliminated. And that covers Son of Godzilla. For me, despite their simple design and lack of power, these vicious bug kaiju nevertheless in many ways steal the show in this film, and here's why. They are perfectly executed plot devices, designed to set up the other three monsters in the movie, and even the humans to an extent. On two occasions, they demonstrate Manila's weakness and dependence on his father, increasing our sympathy for him. 
On the flip side, they build Godzilla and Kumonga up, making both kaiju seem invincible by succumbing to their signature moves, guaranteeing a great climax when the two take each other on. Their lack of a noteworthy design means that they don't distract viewers from the kaiju they are trying to build up. Plus, they have some nice puppetry and are simultaneously cute and ugly. The Kamakuras really do shine in this film. So, how about in other movies? The next film to feature a Kamakuras was Destroy All Monsters. Sort of. See, there is this one part of the movie where they briefly show Kumonga making his way to Mount Fuji, but they use some stock footage from Son of Godzilla, and you could just barely see Kent Kamakuras tied up in Kumonga's web in this quick shot, which I think Toho hoped wouldn't be noticed. Well, sorry Toho, but now the word is getting out. I still don't understand why they didn't give Kamakuras an actual role in this film. I mean, this movie is supposed to be a gathering of the entire kaiju gallery, and we know they still had some usable Kamakuras props left, so I can't see an excuse. And how do we know that at least one Kamakuras model was still usable? Because they used one for a newly filmed scene in the next movie, All Monsters Attack. Most of the monster scenes in this film were just stock footage, and it even featured Godzilla's first battle with the three Kamakuras from Son of Godzilla. But surprisingly, Kamakuras got to be one of four monsters with some new things to do. After using stock footage to make it look like a Kamakuras was chasing the boy Ichiro, one new scene with the mantis briefly looking down into a hole Ichiro fell into flashed across the screen. Interestingly, the first draft of this film called for Rodan to appear here instead, but Kamakuras ended up landing the role. And that was unfortunately the last time we ever saw Showa Kamakuras up to anything new. But it wasn't the last time Son of Godzilla stock footage of the Mantis was shown though. Two movies later, in Godzilla vs. Gigan, Kamakuras was shown crawling through a forest for about three seconds thanks to another reused clip. I wonder where the Kamakuras dwelling on Monster Island and All Monsters Attack in Godzilla vs. Gigan came from. Monster Island is apparently a separate place from Solgel Island, so did they swim to Monster Island from Solgel? Did radiation on Monster Island somehow create more Kamakuras? Were these ones just naturally big? Kamakuras disappeared off the face of the earth after Godzilla vs. Gigan and didn't appear in any of the Heisei era films, though after these movies came to their conclusion, the bugs did show up in eight episodes of the 256 episode show Godzilla's Island, which aired in 1997 and 98, portrayed of course by toys like the other kaiju. But that's not really too amazing, since most of the other Godzilla monsters made their way into the show too. But then, something incredible almost happened for the Mantises during the Millennium Era. The Kamakuras almost went from being weak little minion kaiju to the stars of a movie alongside Godzilla in an unrealized film fans like to call Godzilla vs. Kamakuras. You heard right. Director Shusuke Kaneko toyed with the idea of centering the 25th film in the Godzilla franchise around Godzilla fighting a Kamakuras, which blows my mind. The bug was apparently his favorite monster. However, this was around when Godzilla vs. Megagirus was coming out, and probably since Godzilla had just fought a bug kaiju in that film, who you can learn more about in this video, the idea was unfortunately dropped, and several other ideas were tried out before the movie eventually became GMK. So that was an unfortunate turn of events for the Mantis monsters, but then Godzilla's 50th anniversary rolled around and things began to improve. Godzilla Final Wars, a movie with tons of returning kaiju, was put out to celebrate Godzilla's anniversary, and among the all-star cast of monsters was... K kumonga again? You show up in every single film that the Kamakuras do, what's up with that? Stop trying to steal their thunder. Anyway, yes, Kamakuras returned, with a slight redesign by Shinji Nishikawa. Nishikawa changed the insect's spear-shaped arm into a scythe-like limb instead, because the bug was going to be participating in the battle in the movie, wherein Giris rolls up into a ball, and Kamakuras was going to swipe the spiny kaiju back with his arms. But that ended up being an unnecessary change, because Kamakuras ended up getting his own separate match against Godzilla instead. Shinji mentioned that if he'd known that was going to happen, he would have kept Kamakuras' spear arm. The other main change to the bug monster's look was that its color was changed from a brownish red to a more mantis-like green. It was depicted in Godzilla Final Wars both with CGI, but also still a prop, which was built by Shinichi Wakasa's company, Monsters Inc. Okay, do I go for a Pixar joke again, or just move on? Um, move on. Just kidding. Alright, let's get back in universe. Kamakuras was one of the many monsters to attack an Earth city in Final Wars, appearing in Paris and apparently causing a lot of destruction in the French capital. It also attacked the Earth Defense Force's ship, the Eclair, and whacked it with its scythe-like arms. It returned to Paris after the Xelian's true intent was discovered, and was then unleashed in Manazuru, Japan to battle Godzilla. It decided to go for a sneak attack, and utilized a new ability where it completely camouflaged itself, becoming entirely invisible. 
Godzilla began using his atomic breath to smoke it out, though, and realizing time was running out, Kamakurus came out of hiding and lunged at the King of the Monsters. But just like in Son of Godzilla, Godzilla simply took hold of the big bug and tossed it into a transmission tower, which impaled it, quickly killing the kaiju. Alright, we just have one more film to cover, and it's the one and only movie to feature Kamakurus to not include Kumonga. It took until 2017, but it did happen. That film is the first animated Godzilla film, Godzilla Planet of the Monsters. Kamakurus was shown to be the first monster to attack a human city in this continuity, appearing in Manhattan in 1999 and killing 2.5 million people. You do remember when that happened, right? Boy, we Americans have such short memories. Speaking of America, the Hollywood film Godzilla King of the Monsters possibly could have featured Kamakurus since it appeared in concept art for the movie, but Legendary didn't feel like paying Toho for the rights for more of their monsters, so they decided to come up with their own. One more production to mention before the minor appearances section. Godzibon, the web series with puppet Godzilla monsters, has featured a group of Kamakurus called the Three Kamakurus Brothers, who in one episode threatened the Three Godzilla Brothers after coming into contact with a weird purple substance that enlarged them. But thankfully, Uncle Zilla, the Shin Godzilla, was able to set things right. Alright, time to cover some other types of media featuring Kamakurus, beginning with books and comics. These two tie-in novels for the animated Godzilla films include Kamakurus within their pages, as do these books published by Random House in the 90s. Godzilla Rulers of Earth, Cataclysm, Rage Across Time, Rivals, and Versus the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers also featured the Mantis, as well as the manga based on Planet of the Monsters. Moving on to video games and mobile games, and pinball, Kamakurus have crawled their way into all of these, though usually not as a playable character, but rather as an enemy for Godzilla to pummel or a monster to add to your database. Godzilla Battle Line, a mobile game I play quite often, is a notable exception. Here you can add the bugs to your team and unleash three Kamakurus, represented by one Kamakurus, or a swarm of Kamakurus. The insects sadly haven't been playable in the Atari games yet, which is unfortunate. Okay, that leaves us with nothing but Kamakurus merchandise to look at. The Mantis Kaiju has understandably never been a top priority monster for manufacturers to produce for their different toy lines, but the bugs still get merch on occasion. Here's some Kamakurus products that made their way into my Toku archive, aka my collection. I've got a figural bag clip and these two little guys. Yeah, nothing too crazy, but most of the really great Kamakurus products are quite expensive, like the rare Godzilla collection figure or the X-Plus or Marmot varieties. I'm hoping we get a Movie Monster series release soon, since those tend to start out sort of affordable. But in the meantime, we do have some options. And while we're on the topic of toys, don't forget to check out my eBay store for all your Toku figure needs. And while we're on the topic of shameless plugs, be sure to follow me on my new Twitter account, at the TokuProf, to participate in tokusatsu conversations and get updates on new YouTube videos I'll be putting out in the future. And also please like, subscribe, and comment to support me here on YouTube. Hmm, what caused me to start plugging everything all of a sudden? I guess it was since I'm out of Kamakurus facts. Hope you enjoyed this history of Kamakurus. If I missed anything, be sure to leave a comment to fill us in. And with that, I believe I'm done. And what do you know, I can actually wrap this class up in peace since Kishimu-kun and Pencil Leopard aren't here to interrupt me. I do miss them, though. Hope they're having a good summer vacation. Brr, this is the worst vacation ever! This weather is wacky! <laughs> you're turning into a snow leopard! <laughs> and now to top it all off, you're laughing at me! This couldn't get any worse! Uh-oh. Uh, I stand corrected. Attaboy, Kashimu-kun! With a little ingenuity, we have conquered the vile beast! Now, let's go home! Roger that, Pencil Leopard! Ah, those lights feel good! Solgal Island was hit by a giant mate. Kumonga was effortless.